Hello everybody and welcome back to Moody Plays Legend of Zelda the Minish Cap. Today we are starting off finding some keenstones in the Castor Wilds. They are all red and will become available once you can dive under the water with the flippers. And this next part we shall reveal a fun little minigame. Oh, here we are. You've come to the fabu fabulous Simon Simulations. Would you like to hear about us? Ho ho! Well, certainly. Now how shall I put this? We offer you the chance to be the hero you dream of becoming. We allow you to fight grand monsters without any danger. This is our unique service now. I can't say this too loudly, but... If you dispatch a monster skillfully enough, you might get something nice. Now, even though this is only a simulation, it is still not for the faint of heart. If you should die in this simulation, why then, well, I don't know. It's never happened. It's ten rupees for one try. Interested? I see. So you're going then. Well, let me get a fighter up here. You're getting very, very sleepy, sleepy. Ha ha ha. And basically, you just fight the monsters and kill all of them. Um, I believe the amount of monsters and what monsters generate here are determined by um, your progress in the game. I'm not exactly sure if it's your heart container count or if it's your progress in the plot, but um, I am familiar with doing this very late in the game, like skipping out during the final dungeon and then going in to do this, and uh, I fight two waves of monsters. I can't recall if it's pre or post credits or not but uh so i fight two waves cuz i'm that far in the game but here we only have to f face one wave and we get a piece of heart How was it? Did you enjoy the ride? Please come back and try it again any time. We're always open, selling dreams to John Q. Public, yes sir. And now we are going back to the dungeon where we first obtained the flippers because there is a little thingy in here, that frozen chest, that uh, if we do not get it, uh, in time it will be blocked off. Now it's only a hundred mysterious shells, so it's not that big a deal, but if you don't feel like grinding for them. And over here we get another piece of heart. And uh, then we go north. And over here is a chest with 200 rupees in it. And over here, we are fighting one of the golden piñata monsters. Uh, sped up, of course, because it takes a bit to hack this thing down, especially with all the jumping. And he drops... what was that, a hundred rupees? Yeah, a hundred. And, uh, keenstone in that chest, which we got from a keenstone fusion. And over here, I believe this was Gale's fusion, a piece of heart. And over to the library to show you the results of fusing with the postman. I'm selling subscriptions for an adventurer's help guide. It's called the Swordsman Newsletter. It's full of helpful advice. Right now I can sign you up for only 200 rupees. Believe me, it's a bargain. Would you like to subscribe? 
Now, I'm not sure why she says subscribe, because you're paying for each and every book instead of paying a big price for all of them. So... <laughs> Hello! We've got a new issue for you! And basically, all eight of these newsletters give tips and tricks for fighting in the game. Swordsman Newsletter number one. Some walls go boom. It may look like a regular wall, but it may be something you can blow up. There's actually an easy way to tell, and I'm here to teach you. Build up the power in your sword and start stabbing the wall. If you pay attention, you'll find that some spots make a different sound. Teach us, teacher! Monsters got you! Don't give up! Start mashing buttons! You might be able to escape quickly! Swift Blades Gossip Column the magical boomerang. Somewhere in Hyrule, you can find an incredibly handy boomerang. It's designed so you can change its direction after you throw it. Or so I've been told, but it's just a rumor. Swiftblade signing off. That's it for our first issue. We plan to bring you helpful questing hints every week, so check your mail! See you in issue number two! Until next time, warriors! Now, uh, some of the tips and tricks you may have noticed me pulling off already, and, well, it's because I read them. <laughs> And, uh, as I said, there are eight total, and you have to fork over 200 rupees each. There is no way you are going to be able to stuff your maximum-sized wallet once to pay for all of them. So, like, get four with one group, and then four with the other. Swordsman Newsletter number two. This year's must-have item. Have you seen this box that move along walls? Your sword doesn't work, so maybe you've just given up fighting them. But have you tried all your items? Like, what about your boomerang? Give that a shot. You might be surprised at the results. Teach us, teacher! Monster took your shield? Well, don't get all down about it. All hope is not lost. Beat him up quickly, and you might just get it back. Swiftblade's Gossip Column, the Mirror Shield. A beautiful, glimmering shield capable of reflecting monsters' shots. You can use it to turn their attacks back at them. Or so they say, but it's just a rumor. Swiftblade signing off. Issue 2 is out the door. We've got our first reader mail. Let's answer it now. Hey, Swiftblade, what's your best feature? That would be my eyebrows. I spend a lot of time grooming these suckers. See you in issue 3. Until next time, warriors. And over here, I am going to show you a few things that Ezlo says if you take him to your house. If you take him up to your room. So, this is your room. That makes it my room too, right? And over here. I sense something unusual here. Is it something hidden? I won't tell anyone, so come on, show me. And... I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to be, but, uh, 
taking an educated guess, it's probably what I'm doing right there, that uh, infinite ruby spot. Basically, it pops out 20 at a time, and if you're lucky, you'll get another prize. Swordsman Newsletter number three. Got a bone to pick? You're sure to run into more than a few skeletons on your journey. That's why this week's newsletter is dedicated to all you bone breakers. A good solid whack to the head should do the trick. That's their weak spot. Try smacking them with a beam from your cane of Pocky. You should also try your Gust jar. That head should just pop right off. They go all to pieces once they lose their head. Teach us, teacher! Those darn bob -ombs. If you hit them with your sword, they'll run all over the place and explode. But don't you worry. This newsletter's here to teach you how to cope. Your best bet is arrows. One shot can take them down. You can fire from a safe distance, too. There's also your gust jar. Draw them in and shoot them out, and they'll even blow up whatever they hit. Swift Blades Gossip Column. Light arrows are amazing. They go through grass. They fell a monster with one strike. They're handy. They're dandy. They're a super duper ultra item. Or so it seems. But it's just a rumor. Swift Blade signing off. We've got more reader mail this week. Hey, Swift Blade. How many siblings do you have? There are nine of us, not counting the ghost of Swiftblade the first. I'm the oldest, but again, that's if you don't count Swiftblade the first. See you in issue four. Until next time, warriors. Now, a bit of a nitpick. Why is he saying weak? If what I'm reading from this game is correct, all of these events are supposed to take place in the course of a single day. Though, uh, I'll go on more about that, uh, when we're done reading the newsletters. Have you ever seen a golden monster? When you fuse keenstone pieces, you might get the rare chance to meet one. They're much stronger than the regular versions of that monster. Of course, if you beat one of them, you'll get something really good. If you see one, go fight it instantly. Just drop everything and go. Teach us, teacher! Coping with a thorny situation. Those thorny little thorn monsters. Your sword doesn't hurt them and at all. But if you bump them with your shield up, they'll totally flip. There are other ways, though. Flip them with a bomb, or your cane of Pocky, or with a well-placed down thrust. How's that for options? Your head must be swimming at the possibilities. Swift Blades Gossip Column, Remote Bombs. Here's a secret. You can blow them up whenever you want. How cool is that? Or so it seems, but it's just a rumor. Swiftblade signing off. I went to Lon Lon Ranch the other day. I saw the ghost of Swiftblade the First defeat a cow with his bare hands. It was kind of sad, really. See you in issue 5. Until next time, warriors. 
And over here, we shall show the final Pico Blooms blooming. <sighs> and next clip, <laughs> which is right here. Uh, after fusing a keen stone with Malon, I will show you exactly what the hell those Pico Blooms do. Remember this little, uh, cove. It's gonna be funny later. And now we go down. And, uh... Now, you remember how we cleaned this guy's stall off of dust? Why, hello there! Thanks for coming by. I sell all kinds of Picolite. I just put it in your bottle and good stuff happens when you drink it. Oh, that orange Picolite really makes traveling easy. It helps you find fairies everywhere. Care to buy it? It's 300 rupees. Basically, they uh, alter the random drop of items that you would get when... Oh, that blue Pico Light is amazing stuff! It helps you find items! Care to buy it? And I believe by items he means like stuff like ammo for your bombs and your arrows. But, uh... Oh, that green Pico Light is for only the most serious of collectors! It will make it easier for you to find mysterious shells. Care to buy it? Oh, that yellow picolite makes it easier for you to find rupees. It practically pays for itself. Care to buy it? It's 200 rupees. Derp -de -derp. Uh, oh, that white picolite is for people who want to get lucky. It makes it easier for you to find keenstone pieces. Care to buy it? It's a hundred rupees. And I will buy it because I seriously need some green ones. Oh, that red picolite will make your quest so much easier. It makes it a cinch for you to find hearts. Care to buy some? Basically, the items that you get, uh, chopping down grass, tilling soil with your mole mitts, cutting up blocks, fighting monsters, all that sort of say, all that sort of thing. The picolite alters the probability of what you get to whatever the picolite is for, and possibly maybe increases the chance of actually finding that thing. And no. And over here is. Basically, a little gambling mini game, and uh. And uh. If you didn't fuse keenstones with the. Uh, I think it's. Spookter? It's Spookter or Spectre? Uh, one of the two ghosts. The one that wasn't blocking Anju's place. Uh, basically, level, the game is, you pick a chest, if you pick the right one, you get, you get, uh, twice the rupees that you spent on the game. And you can keep going and going and going. Level 2 has three chests. But... It triples 
what you uh, paid to play the game. And uh, it's no prize for getting up to X amount of rupees. It's just something for if you are really lucky and really need rupees. But um, I personally prefer my grinding strategy at the spot in front of your house. And something I must wonder, why does he open the shop in the first place? Why is he all grumbly about it? And here at the bakery, Wheaton and Pita, basically uh, you can buy some baked goods and uh, there will be a chance of something hidden inside the baked good. Like that! The more expensive the pastry, the more likely you will get something. And, uh, at least we won't have to wonder where Link is getting his food. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, yes. Um... Like, basically, the reason why I think this game takes place in the course of one day is because... This is it for Mutiplace Legend of Zelda the Minish Cap. Uh, I will see you next time.